Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Master Marcel, Shoe and Sell on YouTube. Right now, I'm making this video for a friend, Lao Shu 55000. Him, his foreign language road running technique. Please check him out on YouTube, Lao Shu 55000. He is the reason I'm making this video for you all. Right now, this video is basically explaining my Japanese resources I've used in the past and still use to study as well as uh, translate whenever needed Japanese. So pay attention because usually I don't I don't do this. I don't share my resources with many people. So consider yourself fortunate if you're watching this video, if you're a language enthusiast, learner, professional, whatever. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Uh, when I first started learning Japanese, I started with, you know, you have to learn hiragana, katakana. So this book right here was a, a good, good little reference for the language. It had... Um, Go through the language real quick. Yeah, hiragana, the basic hiragana script, as well as the combined forms. And then it had katakana and the exercises. Now, when I first started out, I started writing in the book, but my little technique for you guys would be <laughs> I got smarter after I started. Uh, I figured I probably wouldn't remember the character writing it about four or five, six times, whatever, ten times. So I took it to Kinko's and just copied it. I guess I got smarter <laughs> after I messed up. I was like, yo, these are teaching materials. I guess they're meant to be copied. So a little technique already. Let's copy them. You see I have them wrote inside, inside the books. Take them to the store, copy them. You got a printer, scanner. Use that as a photocopier. And then you have the the kind of script right here. So that's the beginner kana's workbook. You can learn here gonna cut the kind of first yeah. hundred words in Japanese. It's a beginner's guide. This is beginner stuff. This is good for uh, remembering the katakana, hiragana, as well as exposing you to some kanji, some basic kanji. And they also come with flashcards. So if you like to train that way, you know they have flashcards that you can train with. Okay, on to the next. Now, after you're done with um, Hiragana Katakana, you're going to step into the lifelong kanji <laughs> kanji dimension, I guess. And then this book has 750. And there's two books. It's a Tuttle book made by Tuttle, the Tuttle Language Library. And book two. Between both of these books, they have the 1945 Joyo Kanji characters. So, I mean, you're going to spend some time on that, depending on how you go about learning it. This book, very good. And I also like the way they introduce, like for instance, they also have Hiragana and Katakana in this, and they have more spaces for you to write it. The bigger, you have bigger spaces, as well as smaller spaces, which is more like a practical, a practical uh, writing, writing environment. Like, for instance, notebook, paper, stuff like that. So, let's go to the kanji, see if we can go to this kanji. They have, they have them ordered almost in the same, the same order that they teach them in grade school in Japan. So, that's one thing I like about this series. And also, let me start from the beginning. Okay. The first kanji they teach you is Jin, Hito. Hito. Person, human. They give definition as well as since they know you don't know uh you don't you don't know kanji yet, they give you America Jin. America Jin. So they know they uh, ex they try to uh expose the kanji to you in a way to where you can use a previous kanji or previous for instance here Ghana Katakana. Like in the first example, they have katakana. Since you already know katakana, since you finished it up on the last, the previous page, they mix the katakana in with the kanji, the first kanji you know, so you can kind of, you know, uh, remember it that way, teach yourself condition, and uh, get familiar with writing it. And then, you know, hyaku, hyakunin, a hundred people, you know, so. Ano, yeah, ano hito, hitobito, so. They teach you, I like the way they introduce the, 
introduce this. So you can do this. You can pretty much do this this book straight through, and uh, you'll be. It's a good uh, good way to learn the language. It's a good way you'll you'll be learning it almost as if you're in the classroom Japanese grade school system. Almost, it's pretty close. They did a pretty good job with laying out the the book. So you can pretty much do this book straight straight through. The next one is Ichi, Hito, one. They also give you the Chinese origin and as well as the Japanese the Japanese pronunciation and. When I first when I first didn't know how to study the language, I would always remember I would rem remember the Chinese origin more than the I didn't know that the smaller meant until I got more familiar with the language and learned a lot more. I didn't know the smaller was how the Japanese pronounced it, so I was remembering. I just remembered all of them. So <laughs> for every kanji, so it was pretty rough when I was start starting out. So you pretty much just have to remember the lowercase if you learn Japanese, but it helps to know you have to know all of them. And then if you use this in conjunction with Let's say the Kanji Learner's Dictionary. Let's see if I can help you find it. I have a few minutes on this. Uh, see if I can find it in here. A few minutes on the video. If I can find that some characters have about a million different meanings. So, for instance, here we go. You have Ichi, Itsu, Hitotsu, and Hito. That means one. And depending on what it's in front of, it also means one as well. But it also means, if you see in the dictionary, and this isn't the most advanced, this is just a, a beginner's kanji dictionary. They have a, a few volumes that are higher than this. But pretty much, you have, um, you know, Hajime, Hitoshi, Makoto, and a given name. So, Kazuhi, part, part of a given name. So, you have, and then they have, a, you know, the dictionary breaks it down to a lot of different definitions. Just about every word you'll find Ichi in front of that character, that kanji in front of. So it gets deep once you, you know. The next set of resources is uh, I got these at a Japanese uh, Japanese marketplace out in California. A Japanese called Mitsuwa. Um, Shinuhongo no Kiso uh, is pretty much the English translation. It's made by the, um, let's see. It's association, uh, or no association for overseas something and something. <laughs> I think it's technical, yeah, technical scholarship. So I mean, it's pretty much a book. It's like a little course, small course, good introduction for beginner, uh, be be beginner to middle, middle, intermediate. I say intermediate studies, and they have kanji, kanji here, as well as the kind of forms as well as the English definition so it's good to keep your conditioning up it's good it's a good course kanji cards I like the Tuttle series uh, because it's uh, it takes a while to learn if you go through their their course but I think uh, it's like kind of like the old school method and that's kind of the way I learned the, the real way the way that takes time there's fast ways and there's quick way you know there's quick ways but I prefer to master everything so I don't really care how long it takes as long as I get good conditioning and I'll tell you why that's important here in a second. If I can, <laughs> if I can beat the ten-minute mark. Dictionaries, pocket dictionaries. This one's no good. Don't buy that one. Webster Dictionary. Webster's no good. Webster does not does not know Japanese. Oxford. This is a really good one. This is a very good dictionary. And the Tuttle. This is probably one of the best ones I brought for the price. I think it only cost me fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars pocket dictionary. It has a lot of definitions. Pretty much with dictionaries and even kanji encyclopedias, it's pretty much the more money you give them, the more you get. So the more, so for instance, this has fourteen thousand characters. You spend it costs twenty five dollars. You spend you spend about you spend sixty dollars. They might give you a hundred thousand or fifty thousand, and then you spend two hundred. You know you get a you get a hundred thousand different de definitions. But some people need it, some people don't. It depends on where you want to go with the language. You know, phrase book that explains itself. It's pretty much for travelers and stuff like that. Get familiar with sentence patterns. Japanese vocabulary, which is good for, you know, expanding your vocabulary. You got different, you know, categorize. It's good for, de depending on what you want to learn. Baron, they have a good series. But a lot of the stuff isn't in, uh, it's in Romanji. It's in Romanji, which isn't good if you want to, if you want to take it really, really, really serious. And you want to get used to seeing it. So that's, this is a good book. All good resources. And then also for grammar. I forgot my <laughs> old school Hello Kitty uh, 
bookmark. You know, <laughs> it's a joke. You know, Asians like Hello Kitty, so I picked that up just to be funny. So, uh, Japanese grammar, uh, Baron, like I said, Baron has a good, pretty good resources, uh, good, good reference. This uh, pretty much explains sense patterns, stuff like that, uh, phrases, pronunciation, as well as particles, which is the tricky part of Japanese. So it explains particles really good, especially for the price. It's like seven, eight bucks. So they get seven, seven dollars. This is a new acquisition. A Japanese language, this is for those who want to get technical, in-depth, uh, in-depth, um, in-depth um, studies. So there's, you know, some people have different goals with their language learning. This is making out in Japanese. This is like that real, more making out in Japanese. This is that real that real conversation that some people, some people, you know, want to know. They want to talk as if they're like native. They want to talk, you know, they don't want to talk dirty. They don't want to be 100% formal all the time. Or if somebody's not talking formal to them, it help you understand, you know, what they're, what they're talking about. And uh, it's also dirty cuss words, you know. They got, they talk about making love, relationships, breakups, and pregnancies. The real shit. This is the real shit. So that's a good book. You know, and it's also a Tuttle book. So Tuttle has good good resources. These idioms. Idioms. Those are idioms. I like idioms because uh, if you understand idioms, you'll understand more of the language. And um, like an idiom is like a, a statement that only certain people use. Like certain, I guess you could say certain certain groups of people. Like certain, it could be like a it could be a community, it could be a, a race, it could be a, a class or something. Like for instance, if I said, um, like, like that motherfucker, that motherfucker over there tripping, you know, you might, like, well, that motherfucker, what's a motherfucker? You know, that's like the substitute for now, like that person, like I'm not saying that motherfucker, like he go, he go fuck some others type stuff, you know. So it's it's like a it's a it's like a implication, you know. And then also he's not tripping. But like he over there tripping. Like he's not falling. So you have to in order to understand the idiomatic statement, you have to you have to really you would really understand the language as a foreigner, as a as a native. If you, if you want to get native level, you have to understand this. A lot of this. Japanese for busy people. It's a good uh this is a Kodansha uh Kodansha book. And it's also, you know, Kodansha oh, Kodansha, Kodansha, I'm sorry. Is the, the Association for Japanese Language Teaching? They're like the they work in co cooperation with the Ministry of Japan and stuff like that. So it's pretty much like the official curriculum. That's why their books cost so much. In case you guys don't know, it's like the official curriculum of Japanese. Like I was telling you how the more money you get, the more money you spend, the more characters you get. The reason why that's important is because let's say I have this right here. Let's say you come across something like you think you know Japanese. Like, okay. It's Naomi, Savis, you know, Savis Manual, whatever. So, so and then you turn the page, and you're like, whoa, shit, I don't understand a, a damn thing on there. It's not in my books. You know, that's where spending the most money on kanji encyclopedias will, will really, you know, show its worth, its true value. So, basically, the more, the more characters and compounds you have, the more you'll be able to understand, the more technical stuff. It could be doctor, doctor terms, scientific terms, etc. Computer terms. Um, it could be scientific processes. You know, that's pretty much what you're paying for with kanji encyclopedias. Like this is one of them. One of them. Uh, one of the basic ones I have. Panda Land. This is like a little snack. I never opened it because I just like to. You know, there's other ways to learn languages while not being in the classroom. So you know, you eat the snack and then you turn turn to the back of it. You have you know Chinese. Seasons, and then you have the Japanese with the kana and the romanization to the right of it, which is I thought was interesting. And then you have also, you know, you have leaves, snow, kanji for it, as well as the kana. So there's there's a lot of ways to power up, you know, increase your knowledge while not being in the classroom environment. That's so this little tour. I made that for Lao Shu fifty five thousand. So shout out to him. Y'all can check me out, Marcel, mastermarcel.com. And uh, there you have it.